Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to talk about augmented reality and technologies. For me, it's a pleasure and a challenge to be here today. Once in a while, I have to speak in public, but usually I don't do it before such a big audience as you. During the coffee break, uh, we talked about how there's probably many uh, students uh, from VET here as most of the teachers. So it's a pleasure to see you all here to be able to speak about technology as we will be doing today with those uh, responsible of the VET schools. And it's a challenge to speak after Jorge. Uh, fortunately, there's been a break between both, and it's always, uh, as I said, a pleasure to listen to his words. He's a um, motivated speaker, and he speaks about the key elements, not only in VET, but also in other fields that I will be speaking about today. My name is Unai Extremo. I'm the CEO and one of the founding members of the Virtual Wear Group, a company that has existed for 14 years. We work on technology, providing solutions for different markets like the health sector or the industrial sector. To give you some information about myself, because the way I've been uh, trained is very much related to all this, here th are there are three key elements of my uh, childhood and teenage years. First of all, we have uh, two books, so it is a, a basic for kids. And I don't know why they were in my home when I was very young. I don't have any relative or family members that are related to the business world nor technology, but somehow these books uh, were at my place. And I was very enthusiastic at the time working with the spectrum that you can see on the screen, which was my first interaction with uh, computers and computer sciences. And then here we have another uh, landmark for those of us that work in the field of uh, 3D and uh, video games, which was uh, of Saint 3D, which was the first uh, video game for PC in 3D. So I wanted to study computer sciences, and I became a computer engineer. And this is a degree I got at the University of uh, Deusto. I studied uh, computer uh, engineering because I'm from Algorta, a town uh, close to Bilbao. That's my um, uh, town. And uh, at the time, the University of the Basque Country didn't have uh, computer studies in Vizcaya. They had them here. So I was able to study in Deusto in Vizcaya. And then uh, two things uh, happened uh, which were very important for my uh, life. One of them has to do, and Jorge mentioned before, with the importance of uh, teachers. I found during my studies teachers that introduced me to some I uh, ended my degree in the year 2000, and we started to talk about the first uh, um, PCs with uh, multimedia. I was able to learn about this through many of my teachers at the university that were interested in these technologies. And from there onwards, at the University of Deusto, they uh, created a master on technologies of virtual reality. And this was 2001, 2002. And I also did that uh, master's course. And during my career, I've met uh, two people that you see here, Sergio Barrera and Álvaro Barrios. And uh, we were the three founders in the year 2004 of uh, VirtualWare. 
Very quickly, VirtualWare is a business group. VirtualWare is our core company. We've uh, worked since uh, 2014 in immersive technologies, providing solutions to our customers using these technologies. We have a uh, 5 million euro re revenue for the year 2017, and we have 70 employees uh, in two offices. One we have in the Basque Country and another office in Mexico. And we also have a commercial uh, office in uh, London and in Madrid. In the group, we have uh, VirtualWare, which is the company that provides uh, tailored med, uh, solutions uh, based on immersive and interactive technologies. Then we have uh, Immerso that was just created that uh, provides uh, solutions for entertainment. And I will be speaking about this at the end of my talk today. And finally, we have a company called Evolve. This was a project that we developed with a local institution for the health sector. Evolve is a medical device manufacturer that using these technologies provides solutions to improve the quality of life of uh, patients of uh, specific diseases. And today, I wanted to mention this, today is uh, uh, the um, day of uh, multiple sclerosis. And uh, here in Gipuzkoa, there's three people uh, that are diagnosed uh, per month. Our product is one of the first uh, products that was developed with the Association of Multiple Sclerosis in Vizcaya, and it is uh, helping these um, people uh, to uh, live and have a better quality of life. There's no cure for this disease, so uh, today, that is the day we should uh, talk also about uh, this disease so that we can uh, find um, a cure. In our company and in the group, we have an R&D and I um, department, which is the VirtualWare Lab. What we try to do is to develop a technology in the spheres that you can uh, see there. We work in virtual reality, augmented reality, motion tracking, artificial intelligence, computer vision, everything that has to do with human-machine interfaces. And I will be speaking about this further on some uh, trends like uh, blockchain. And uh, Alex will be speaking also about big data. The first thing I want to do before going to the content of my talk is to quickly explain what is virtual reality, augmented reality, and a mixed reality, and what's the difference between one system and another. Because later on, I will be speaking about different fields where I mix a concept like a virtual, augmented, and mixed. When we talked about virtual reality systems, here you have an image that can, um, that's what everyone understands for virtual uh, reality. And that's that through your senses, you become part of a non-real world. What we try to achieve, and you all know uh, uh, or have seen the uh, Matrix film, and that's what they told us a few years back that we will be able to do, to perceive as real something that is not real. What we have nowadays are specific systems that deceive some of our um, senses, which are our sight and our hearing, but also through smell and other senses, we can believe that we are in a different place to where we are. When we talk about augmented reality, we are speaking about a concept, even though we have similar technologies, it is fundamentally different because we have what we just have there, but it's uh, augmented and we have other information. This is a common example that we've uh, seen for a time now with technologies like a layer that allows us to uh, have our mobile 
and to get the information of a specific place over the uh, image. So what we do is to augment the reality that we have before us. And what is a mixed reality, which is a new concept? Those of you that like uh, figures and what Gardner and other consultants say, this seems to be the future for everything and that everything will be based on mixed reality. The concept of mixed reality is augmented plus advanced reality. They say it is a mix between virtual and augmented realities. We introduce a virtual element over what we're seeing. Uh, here we have this uh, part of an airplane and we want this to be in part of our reality. So I try to have the virtual object in my reality. And this concept brings together augmented reality with some concepts of virtual reality. This would be one example, and I will be showing you other examples of mixed reality, because nowadays we speak more about mixed reality than about augmented or virtual reality. I like to use this kind of graphs. In this case, we usually work with the uh, Gardner's hyper circles, which show where we are regarding the adoption of uh, technologies. And this is what the Gardner Consultancy Company does. In this uh, three spheres, virtual reality, augmented, and mixed reality, we are in different uh, moments regarding the status of the technology. So we will apply them in different way in our centers. We have our virtual reality that seems to be in the leading position that has gone beyond the trigger of innovation on the bubbles that we usually have in technology and has also um, become a mature technology that allows us to generate uh, solutions. But when we talk about augmented reality, you will see it uh, in the curve, but still, we find uh, systems and devices that are not so advanced that uh, will not uh, allow us to generate uh, solutions. Therefore, there are different technologies with different degrees of maturity. And what's important for uh, us, for you, and for companies to see what we can do with these uh, technologies when applying them. Today, I talked with uh, Jorge previously, and we talked about the audience uh, that I would be speaking to. And what I'm going to try to do is to try to provide you five reasons why I understand that you, as uh, teachers uh, and responsible leaders of VT uh, centers, that have to uh, provide skills and so on and so forth. I'm going to give you five reasons why this technology should be elements that you should be aware of in your strategy. And in some cases, you should start implementing it if you're not doing it already. And of this uh, five reasons, uh, this would be the first one. And the first one? has to do with the possibility of it being accessible or not where this technology is. And it has uh, to do, and this is my view, to see what was the past and what is the present of these technologies. There is someone I usually introduce, that is uh, Jean Olanier, who was the person that first uh, coined the concept of virtual reality in the world. He had the uh, idea of the concept and brought this idea to society. This is important because in recent years, I've uh, 
found a people that believed that virtual reality had been discovered by a Facebook or its CEO, as if it was the first company that had done anything on virtual reality. But this person speaks about uh, virtual reality already in the 80s, and he does this based on uh, studies, the studies of uh, Ivan Sutherland in Atari. And I'm going to show you a video now. Well, this is our virtual reality glove. It's called the data glove. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you can put on this glove, and the glove lets you feel a world that doesn't exist as if it's real and pick up things in the world as if they're real. Mm -hmm. So it lets you reach into uh, an imaginary world. And um, these are the special glasses called the iPhones that you put on. And um, when you put them on, you're seeing inside an imaginary world instead of inside the physical world. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea is that by wearing computerized clothing right over your sense organs, you transport your sensory system into a reality that can be of any description. Bueno, este video. This is from the year 85. You've seen some uh, devices that if we change the image and use another audio and we change the aesthetics of the video, it could be similar to some of the videos we see today regarding virtual reality. But uh, these people in the year 85 uh, had been working in Atari in video games and create a VPL research and they developed two uh, devices, the helmet and the data glove. Uh, we still haven't heard that much about data gloves, so probably in a few years we will uh, see uh, more of these devices. In the year 90, uh, the company went uh, bankrupt, so they were uh, for five years in the market trying to develop technology. Therefore, it is a technology that already was uh, present in the 80s, but uh, this uh, does not happen only with virtual reality. This uh, gentleman was an engineer in Boeing in the 90s. He had a test that had to do with this uh, circuit, and he designed these uh, glasses that he's uh, wearing to help those that had to uh, work with the circuit, providing them with information so that they could assemble it in a um, more simple manner, and he called that virtual reality, and this was in the 90s. So what's uh, happened? Why are we speaking about virtual reality and augmented reality nowadays? Uh, why wherever we go we find these uh, technologies? And we will talk later about all this making sense or not. But what fundamentally happens, there is a turning point that has to do with uh, Palmer Lucky in the year 2010. He goes to a fair in the U.S. with a device that is a virtual reality helmet that includes uh, screens and an algorithm for visualization that is quite different to what had been done up till then. He starts working with John Carmack that had worked in video games and together they develop a first device that uh, is something that Facebook is interested in and Facebook purchases for uh, um, 2 billion um, this uh, company, the company that they had uh, created. So what happens then? First of all, what has happened since the year 85 to the year 2010 is that technology and devices have uh, um, developed. Uh, for example, we have the first iPhone from the year 2007, and now we see how this has uh, progressed. And once Facebook uh, purchases this company, there is a competition for uh, virtual reality technologies. This is a map of what we can uh, find 
in a, a virtual and augmented reality chain and the different stakeholders uh, present. You see that we have uh, most of the big technological world companies already uh, competing for these uh, devices in virtual reality or augmented reality or generating uh, communities for development. Where does this bring us here? Today, we can have a device such as this one that has a great technology, technology that almost didn't exist in, uh, years ago, or if it existed, we had to pay 10 or 500 times what it's uh, worth uh, today. But now for $799, you can purchase this virtual reality device uh, that has many elements. Or this other um, mixed uh, reality device, we talk about uh, $5,000 or $3,000 for the development edition, something that was unthinkable a few years back. But we've also been able to develop uh, softwares that provide content to these devices in an accessible manner. What was uh, impossible technically or financially in the past is now possible. Now we can access these technologies at a small cost and we can access the development of contents and experiences in a quite acceptable manner. The second element that is uh, quite significant for me we're talking about uh, VET uh, centers or schools, and I don't know if you speak about uh, customers in your field, but this is the customer of the future, the person that is going to be studying and uh, be trained by you, and uh, the person that will be employed by companies in the future. I don't know. Maybe today we are seeing the first virtual natives, not uh, digital natives. Maybe what we have now are generations for whom virtual reality and augmented reality is not something that you need to explain to them because they already play with it. We have here Pokemon, which uh, has been a revolution a few years back. You would see people uh, catching uh, this uh, on the street. I don't know if uh, any of you have uh, done this. So this was a virtual uh, reality um, device, something that they could uh, download in their uh, mobiles. And uh, talking to them about augmented reality is something that they know about and that they consume in the same way in which they can just uh, make a phone call. But we also have this. Sony develops the uh, PlayStation VR with uh, a helmet so that everyone at home with their PlayStation can uh, play games uh, with virtual reality. So the people, your students, maybe uh, 10 minutes ago or a few days back have been uh, using augmented reality or virtual reality at home. But not only this. I don't know if any of you have seen this. There's a logo there for IMAX. IMAX is a multinational. We all know about IMAX uh, for their um, uh, theaters, but they did uh, 3D for films, but now IMAX is opening this uh, arcades, virtual reality arcades. It's like the uh, arcades we went to uh, in the past with uh, our small coins, and we played a game. But now there is a revolution going on. And we, uh, a future it is foreseen for this to be a 45 billion industry. And this in China, where we have one of the biggest markets for virtual reality and HTC, one of the uh, main manufacturers is Chinese. They are uh, opening these uh, arcades in uh, China continually. And uh, companies like IMAX, and I was able to visit one of these uh, places in LA, and IMAX is seeing that the future of uh, leisure goes through this kind of systems. So, 
those of uh, your students probably might have visited these uh, places and know and have played and used virtual reality. Now you will also be wearing a helmet in this uh, kind of uh, entertainment in a roller coaster, for example. In Madrid, for example, they already have one. You are in the roller coaster and you are wearing their helmet, so instead of looking at the landscape, what you do is in the case of Madrid, uh, uh, you are in Gotham and you are visiting uh, Batman's uh, city and also seeing some other heroes or superheroes while you are in the roller coaster. I'm sure some of you have uh, watched this film. The other day I was reading an article that said that in China, after Ready Player One, the uh, percentage of people visiting arcades had grown at 20%. So we think there is going to be more uh, interest on these technologies because someone like Spielberg brings to the movies something that was already in a book but that didn't get out there to the masses. But now, through this film, we would have the effect that in the year 2000 we had with the with Matrix. And we will talk about how this technology is going to change our world. So we know that now we can use this technology, our customer or the people we will be teaching are going to be natives of these uh, technologies. And it's important to speak about the impact that these technologies will have when generating advanced learning methodologies. Jorge talked about one of the fundamental uh, drivers being uh, advanced learning methodologies. I believe these technologies are perfect technologies and one more element, not the only element, but a significant element to generate advanced learning methodologies. Why? I will talk uh, about the advantages that I see in uh, teaching and learning, but uh, mainly we have the concept of learning by doing. These technologies allow us to uh, teach by doing, and in specific fields, teaching by doing is something that uh, allows us uh, to show much more. And we wouldn't be able to do it without these uh, uh, technologies. And also to provide a context for uh, learning, to have uh, those that are being trained in the place where they're going to have to um, work and uh, using learning by doing systems in which they're able to learn through uh, these examples. And I would like to show you a video now. Mainly what I want you to see in this video is how it works. I'm there in a physical space that has nothing to do with the virtual space that I'm observing through the helmet. What we're using here is a virtual reality HTC system, one of the ones that I showed you previously, that allow you to have a three by three space where you can move freely and you, the movement is going to be uh, shown here. What we do is uh, replicating a space that is a working space, in this case, uh, uh, Futsosa, uh, uh, the Futsosa company uh, from the automotive sector. And a part of their process has to do with uh, uh, reviewing uh, parts uh, visually. So the person that has to do this task has to identify mistakes and the kind of mistake and uh, classify it according to this. What we are achieving through this uh, technology is uh, learning by doing. We're learning 
we are making mistakes. The system allows us to know what mistakes we're making so that later we can uh, understand why we made that mistake. And we are also introducing the user into the context in which they will be working. So we had a main aim in this project, and that was to make training more effective to reduce the number of hours needed of being supervised by an expert and to reduce the number of cycles that need to be reviewed by an expert and someone new in the company. So the company used this kind of tool to improve the quality in training and to save time and to have uh, workers uh, uh, working as soon as possible. And another example that I'd like to tell you about, and actually this is something I saw last week, and I thought this was the place to show it to you. I actually got this by the SPRI website from the Basque government where they spoke about how the fact that one of the VET schools had developed a simulator to teach you how to use numerical control panels. So I thought I, you might like to see this video. In Salesianos hemos dado comienzo este año a un proyecto con realidad virtual en el que intentamos acercar el mundo de Please enjoy the video, I'm sure you will do. There is no interpreting into English, we can't hear the sound up here in the booth. Just enjoy the video. hecho a través de la preparación de una máquina de control numérico con la realidad virtual, aprovechando todo el impulso que está teniendo el mundo del 4.0 y de acercar toda esa realidad al mundo de la, de la formación profesional. Hemos virtualizado lo que es el aula, la máquina y el control. Se asemeja mucho a la realidad que estamos acostumbrados y la verdad es que todo el tamaño de la máquina es igual que la que tenemos en la realidad. Poner todas las tapas y ver eh, lo mismo que tienes en, en clase. Cero máquina, cero pieza. Eh, modo libre ¿Qué es modo libre? Pues para castear. Y ahí hemos conseguido ir testeando con nuestros alumnos todo el proceso de programación que han llevado a cabo hasta conseguir que máquina y realidad virtual ejecuten de la misma manera, de forma que tengan un aprendizaje lo más completo posible. Tiene modo tutorial y si sabe mucho, funciona bastante bien. Encima te está parpadeando las gafas, es el botón que tienes que darle y le vamos a hacer el paso. Y nos ayuda mucho para mejorar a la hora de hacer y, y de saber utilizar la máquina día a día. El beneficio principal es que no puedes romper una máquina, porque siempre vas con el miedo de no sé si tocar aquí, qué pasará si toco al otro lado. Aquí puedes trastear, que aunque de colisión es un programa y te inicias, tiene el botón de reinicio y punto. Al empezar justo a utilizar máquinas de así, igual es peligroso, no sabes qué hacer, puedes romper cabezales, puedes estar... Entonces, la, lo que es la realidad virtual, ese peligro no lo tiene. Y sí que aprendes de la misma manera que lo que puede ser en una máquina real. Por el principio vas con nervios de no sé si tocar aquí, puedo romper lo otro. La realidad virtual vas a tocar si La reacción de ellos es siempre positiva. Ellos son los que más acostumbrados están en los cambios en el mundo de la educación y además han aportado muchas, muchas ideas que han sido positivas para mejorar. Sí, me gustaría estudiar así porque es lo que digo. Tienes eh, la facilidad de darle al inicio y se la acaba. Creo que es una herramienta muy útil que en el mundo de la enseñanza va a ayudar mucho. Tiene mucho más de positivo que de, que de negativo. Es un proceso que, que lleva un recorrido que en principio no, no le vemos fin, que vamos a poder desarrollar muchas cosas y nos va a llevar a a mejorar mucho en el proceso de formación. Bueno, como os decía, As we said, this is a project in which they've included technology into the teaching learning process. In this case, music a VET center in the Basque Country. Another example I wanted to show you. With this project, which we developed together with Technica, 
And I think some of you tomorrow will actually be able to visit Technique and perhaps you may be able to see this or some similar project that use these kind of technology. And here, the aim was to use augmented reality technology, which is a technique that's mentioned a lot. And in this case, we use it to provide information when training people on the job in a real context. So augmented reality is being used as a tool to help people train, not just help them on their day-to-day -day jobs, but actually help people acquire knowledge in the field in which we're working. And in this case, we, we developed was a project in which we teach people how to disconnect the electrical supply from an electric vehicle. Let's see if we can get the video up. What we were seeing there was an example of how you can use augmented reality to teach somebody how to activate the appropriate areas within an electric vehicle, in this case. So these are technologies that in a learning process will probably help us reduce um, travel costs, uh, reduce mistakes, we'll be able to simulate in our surroundings, what we're going to do, we'll be able to work in surroundings that aren't susceptible to mistakes. We work a lot for electricity companies who have to train people that carry out procedures that may uh, cause them harm. They may be at risk of electrical shock. So what we can do is train them in uh, an environment in which there isn't this intrinsic risk. We're also going to increase the effectiveness of our methodology that we use to teach. We increase people's motivation. I don't know if you noticed in the video of the VET uh, school, there are people that get very motivated when they find these kind of technologies, technologies they're actually already used to using, and they're systems that are allow us to also assess and carry on learning just like any other ICD. We can find out what's happening in our simulators, in our virtual reality training systems, and then redo our processes, or in our case, redo our training process. We'll be able to assess people, mark them, certificate their skills, and their aptitudes, and, and these are all going to provide something extra in our learning methodology. Another thing important, I feel, because in the earlier speech, uh, Jorge said that the role of VET centers was to prepare people for what they're going to find when they leave the centers. And now I'd like to talk to you about how important these technologies are for what many of your students are going to find when they actually leave the world of learning and move into the industry. We work in three fields, and we feel that the applicability of these technologies in industries have three very, very clear fields. And I'm going to give you some examples of actually a case where they're already being used, because these are examples of how, in our case, our company, other companies have developed uh, products for large companies that are using these things in the day-to-day -day work. And in the case of industry, a very interesting concept uh, today is what we call digital twins. 
many industries are now using digital twins. What it is is it's a digital replica of a factory, of a product in the factory, a replica, a digital twin, which allows me to recreate certain physical characteristics of my product and which I can get information from. And this information then helps me take decisions or improve processes, design, manufacturing processes, or even decision-making processes. And I'll show you how these technologies are helping us. All the issue of immersive training, which we spoke about earlier. I'll give you an example of a Spanish company that's actually already using immersive training to train many of their employees. And everything that helps people at work through smart tools. Everywhere today, people talk about the fact that many jobs are going to disappear. But many of the technologies that we use, actually, what they help you do is give workers greater skills, give worker the possibility to do more, to take decisions. They give the worker more information so they can do their job more effectively, more efficiently, and, and take better decisions. To give you an example, we're working in environments which actually don't have a lot to do with what I've already shown you, such as control centers for critical structures, where we use virtual reality uh, situations so that people that work in these installations can take their decisions more efficiently, effectively. We, for example, have gone to Egypt, into a control center that Iritha has in Egypt, and we can also do it, in the, we're doing it in the control center for the port of Algeciras. So we use digital twins to superimpose information that's being generated in real time in the physical space on a virtual space, and then we provide users with in-context information, which is far greater than they had before, and it allows them to take decisions much more swiftly, which is very, very important when you're talking about control rooms, for example, for the Algeciras port. Another more industry-based example, here's a video of a project which we developed in this case with a Basque company called ISAR. And here you can see how we're using augmented reality technology, virtual reality systems as well, to see in a factory the information that we already have from our digital systems in the factory. That means we've got a system that keeps information of what's happening in the factory so that people that are in the plant get the information at the place where they need it. There's a sentence out there, I think, that somebody says that information isn't mobile. It has to be contextual. You need the right information at the right uh, place and at the right time, of course. And this augmented reality technology, which we're seeing now, is going to allow us to have that. Because when you go to a company, what you find is you've got the data on many occasions. They've already got everything digitized. They've already got sensors getting information for the machines. And they know what's happening in every machine. But they actually can't see it at the moment that they want to, at the time and the place they want to, to take the right decision. But now you can do that with augmented reality technology. Another thing, another video that I want to to show you of something else that's just around the corner, which is uh, automotive showrooms. In Germany, the development teams and product design teams in uh, car manufacturers are actually collaborating all together and taking design decisions without actually having manufactured anything. This is another significant case for us. Adif. Adif is a company that manages the railway sector in Spain. And in Valencia, in its training center, what they've got is four pieces of equipment of three by three meters of HTC. And all their railway maintenance staff have to use this system. They put one of these helmets on, the one that you can see, and they use these controls to maintain the lines, railway lines, 
in virtual reality before actually going out and doing it. They actually take an exam in virtual reality before going out into the field. This is something that Adif is doing here, and Bisgo, and many other companies. So, people that we are training, when they go to get their training, that's what they come across. Augmented reality systems. Another thing, by the way, if you've been there, there's the biennial machine tool fair in Beck. On Monday and Tuesday of this week, there was a conference uh, parallel to this trade fair in which they talked about maintenance 4.0 and how augmented reality and these technologies are going to allow people that are involved in maintenance do that maintenance more efficiently. And here you can see examples of what we're working on related to remote support, the use of augmented reality to support people that have had to move around or to have gone out to the field to uh, repair a material. And here we'll see a video of that. You need the right people with the right expertise. But bringing people together isn't always easy. And travel is not always an option. With Microsoft Remote Assist, help is always a moment away. With a window into your world, backed by enterprise-level security, your team can collaborate with shared perspective anytime, anywhere. Bonjour, Amy. How can I help you? We're having some issues with our machine in C5. I could really use your help again. We just updated the manual for these. Great. This looks like an electrical issue. I've never seen that before. Have you? I think the Osaka plant had the same problem. Haruto's an expert on this. Oh, yeah. Let's bring him into the call. Hey there. Hey, Haruto. What's going on? Well, we're having some issues here. Do you think it's this component? Our issue was the charging relay. Okay, I'll try that. Can you try this? Okay, that's a problem right there. Even though you might be a world apart, you can solve problems together. That worked. You should be good to go now. Great, thanks for the help, you two. See ya. By bringing digital content and mixed reality annotations into your world, and connecting people across devices, you can get the help you need to solve difficult problems faster. Imagine a Basque machine tool company that has to send specialists to China, to Mexico. Imagine the cost to carry out maintenance on very technical pieces of equipment. Uh, just for a task that is a couple of hours of work, three hours of work or six hours of work. This is what's going to make all that change and change the lives of these companies. Here we've got another example that we're working on. This is Petronas in Malaysia. What we're working on with them is uh, this concept proof, proof of concept that we carried out in January. What they do is they uh, locate their assets. Because one of the problems that they've got when they're carrying out preventive maintenance or when there's a failure in installation, they need to, is to locate the asset, the specific asset that they have to repair. We're using devices with augmented reality. They're actually very complex because they have to comply with ATEX regulations because we're in explosive in, uh, environment in, and these help, help the technicians. And finally, the fifth element that you need to really, really be aware of is the fact that we're only looking at the tip of the iceberg. We're not seeing everything by a long shot. It may well be that we, in the previous presentation said we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I really need to emphasize that we're just talking about the very, very tip of the tip of the iceberg. Look at how things are going to change in the future. The amount of business that's going to be generated by these kinds of technologies. It's incredible. Just to give you an idea, Magic Leap, this is a startup 
But that's ju I've just taken uh, a couple of photos of their device. These are augmented reality glasses. This year, they managed to raise $461 million in fresh funding from a Saudi Arabia fund, of which they'd already taken a billion dollars from. This is the company, a company that was born in 2011 and that promises to bring us the next revolution in uh, devices, augmented reality devices. So maybe the time is going to come when we're going to have information directly projected onto contact lenses, wearable contact lenses. So let's see what happens. I'd like to now show you something that I think is very important. This is NVIDIA. NVIDIA develops graphic uh, uh, cards for PCs and other things. And a, a little while ago, they presented a concept called Holodeck. Previously, we spoke about uh, product prototypes and how we'll work on product prototypes in the future. And this is how they're going to do it, using Holodeck. We're seeing here our avatars representing for real people who are in a totally different physical environment, but who are cooperating, helping design. And now we're beginning to see that that is happening. I'm going to actually maybe skip this. Oh, no, let's put it on. No, nope, let's skip it. I'm going to skip a video, otherwise I won't finish on time. And finally, we've spoken about industry, but this technology is coming to other environments, for example, the health environments. And just to give you an idea, last year, this director was awarded an Oscar for an experience that he'd developed in virtual reality called Carne y Arena. He developed this project in the US. It's uh, Mr. Iñárritu. It's a film that's being projected in many countries. It, it's a, a complete hit. It's been a complete sellout. And a lot of people are talking about it. And what they're talking about in many countries, such as the US, is a new uh, means of entertainment, which is to watch films interactively to watch films while you're walking around inside the film. It's a new way of seeing things. In fact, so much so, universities such as the John Hopkins University is adding to its degree courses concepts such as immersive technologies, etc. So this is these are technologies that are going to revolutionize all different environments. And I'm going to finish here. With this slide, which I use a lot uh, in lots of fields when I talk about the virtual reality technology and other technologies, 
This is Gabe Newell. Gabe Newell is the CEO of Valve. Valve is one of the biggest companies in the video games world, and it owns the market where virtually everybody today downloads or buys PC games, which is Steam. And as Valve is also a, a partner in HTC, those manufacturers of virtual reality devices. And I think last year he said what you can see on the screen. This is a guy who's very, very interested. He's got lots of interest in the technology of virtual reality. And what I want to say with all of this is that when we talk about technologies and we're now talking about augmented reality, we can talk about drones, big data, whatever you want, something fairly common comes about, which you see in the Gartner curve initially, which is that depending on the technology, you can may find camels or dromedaries because it depends upon the type of curve. But it's sometimes we seem to be living in a bubble and, and that you don't actually meet those expectations that you thought there. And sometimes there's a lot of expectations that maybe aren't we aren't going to cover. But maybe what we should do is what this guy does, which is to act, act on what we're clear about. I, he doesn't know whether expectations uh, be uh, covered or if he's going to invoice everything he wants to invoice. But what you have to know today is that with what's already out there, a lot of things can already be done in the fields in which we operate. And that's what's key because they have lots of interests that are going to play with that. And they play by generating a great deal of expectation. They earn a lot of money when they generate that expectation. So what we have to know is, OK, a lot of what we're talking about today or that you can listen to, may, maybe it's not going to remain. But there is some of it that's going to remain. And that's the part that we need to keep our eyes on, because that's what we need to use in our VET schools and help those that go through our hands, our students, to get to know more about. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for spending this hour for me. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you.